Swimming Pool Steve here with another swimming pool equipment installation video. So I just arrived here. This uh, Hayward Super Pump is still running away. You can hear it's running very nicely. No uh, bearing squeal or anything like that. Sounds really good. Doesn't look that old. Okay. Turn that off for a second. Okay, so we've got some rigid plumbing into a single union ball valve into a street elbow. Now I like the spacing here. I'd prefer to see it maybe a little bit longer of a straight run in between the valve and the front of the pump. The longer the straighter the run, the better it is for the pump. It doesn't have to work as hard to draw the water. Uh, biggest problem with that is we've got a street elbow. Street elbow, as you've seen in my other uh, videos, is a very serious flow restriction that doesn't need to be there. Coupled with the fact that the union uh, ball valve itself is a flow restriction, um, that and that together um, are making the pump just work harder than it needs to. Um, as you heard, the pump is running just fine, so everything's okay, uh, but again, it could be better. Okay, so, interesting, it looks like the plumbing coming up from underground here might be old metal. It's hard to see here, but you can definitely see the green staining. Oh, that's definitely metal. So that's very likely to be copper. Um, this pool must be pretty old. Uh, it's... Uh, it's it's renovated, so I can't tell the age of it. Um, but uh, you know, w with copper plumbing, it's going to be 40 years old, and that's probably something that should be replaced. I mean, nobody wants to tear up their deck and replace equipment or plumbing underground. But if you've got metal plumbing in your pool, uh, you need to switch it out. Now, we switch over to this Schedule 40 white PVC, which is great. Everything in the mechanical room here is going to be better than what's underground. That that copper pipe underground, like I mean you can see how heavily oxidized it is. Look at that. Imagine what it looks like buried in the ground. Okay, so continuing on here, we've got the section line into the pump, which sounds good. Some spa flex bent over. We've got an Hayward offline chlorinator, half of it there, going to a rigid elbow. See that's that's the right elbow that you want to use. Not that. This is this is slip on this port, spigot on this port, whereas this is slip by slip, um, and it's it results in less of a less of a flow decrease. Okay, so out of the filter, and we come across here. It all looks pretty nice. Got some rigid pipe there into a nice Hayward. Uh, looks like a FDN, probably a 250 FDN heater. Uh, one of Hayward's better heaters. Um, so in and back out. Now right away, you see that right down there, that's a check valve, which is great. Again, in my other videos, you've probably seen that. That's, that would be to prevent the other half of that Hayward chlorinator. Where is it? Right there. Okay, so comes out of the, the heater, goes into that check valve, and then comes through down to where you see this line connected. If that check valve wasn't there, the chlorine that's coming into the system here could track backwards through the system and ruin the header on this heater. That uh, actually happens all the time. So it's really great to see that, that check valve in place. And then we jump down to a little pipe nub of some Schedule 80 PVC into some poly clamped onto that copper line. Now, the biggest problem I have here, there you go, see that bonding lug? Nothing on it. Let's take her around to the other side here, show you the other one. You can hardly see it because it's pretty dark in here. You can just see the, the tip of it there. That's it. No bonding wire. So that's the big problem here. Um, copper piping underground, not a good idea. Got to replace that. That check valve is a really nice addition. I wish I saw that more. Um, and I guess just the one more thing of uh, going ahead and bonding the heater just to prevent any galvanic corrosion damage that could happen. All in all, uh, better than average room. Uh, still some room for improvement. There's always some room for, for improvement.